Hello again, Scapers. Welcome to an Ironman guide to summiting. Let's not waste any time. Please feel free to use the timestamps in the description or on the screen now to skip things that you don't need to hear. Let's jump right in the video. As always, we're going to start with the essential items. The more of these that you have, the easier or faster your summoning training will be. The shaman outfit is time locked. You need to do familiarization six times. So that's three weeks if you use the weekly resets or six weeks if you don't have those. So make sure you stay on top of that because 6% more summoning XP and saving 5% of charms is huge. Make sure you get this outfit. It's very, very good. Summoning focus, there's only two ways of getting them on an Iron Man account. One of them is the Sophonim Slayer dungeon and the other one is Arch Glacier, mostly streaking. So by the time you get these, you probably won't need them. Well, you never really need them, but they're helpful. If you have them, use them especially on blue charms or whatever the highest XP pouch you can make is. And finally, the charming potions. You need 102 herb lore, which you can boost for, and 104 farming, which you cannot boost for. The limiting factor on this is usually green charms, and there's not really a great source of green charms. We'll go over more of that later. Don't use all of your charms making these charming potions. They're kind of high level. By the time you get to that point, they're not going to be extremely useful for you. Unless you really, really, really want charms and you need 120, then definitely make these. They're a pretty good source of herbler experience, and they're pretty damn good potions. Besides familiarization, you also have daily challenge. I really wouldn't. Combat dailies are really meh. You could also use deck of traits, but again, summoning is pretty quick. I would not lamp it as a combat skill. What I would do is use the wisdom aura. It's plus 2.5% experience, and there's no cap. So if you have it, and you're training summoning, pop the Wisdom Aura, and use Torstal Incense Six if you have it. Because you're going to increase your experience gained, which will lower the amount of supplies you'll need to get, or use. I'm going to say this every single video. Do all of the quests. You get lots of XP, lots of good rewards. Quest dice give GP, which will help you train summoning. Some of the more important quests are Wolf Whistle, just so you get enough gold charms to pass the early levels. As a first resort, so you get the Meat Shop, in Ooglug, and Plague's End so you get Amlot. Besides that, do all the quests, but these are the most important three. This is a very small list of some of the best charm droppers. This is not every single mob that drops charms, there are plenty that do. With that out of the way, if you're a fresh account or a peer that's like a level 10 HP or you're a summoning peer, I don't know, do Croesus. It gives you charms, it gives you money, it's annoying, sure, but Ducrosis. For most players, just passively getting charms and GP and some supplies, do Slayer. It's very straightforward. Do Slayer. The more of it you do, the more of everything you get, including charms. Most bosses give some sort of charms and some sort of GP. You've got Elite Dungeons for greens and for blues. You've got Corporal Beast for blue charms. And you've got Arch Glacier for crimsons and blues. Zero Mechanic Arch Glacier is the fastest kills per hour. So it's the fastest charms per hour. You can also do 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. They're going to lower your charms, but increase your loot. For some non-bossing mobs, for gold charms, you've got hellhounds. For green charms, don't go out of your way to farm these. Get them through other means. But you've got abyssal creatures and the absolute best charm dropper in the entire game, period. The exiled Calphite guardians. I do have a footage of me using my familiarization triple charm ticket. I'll link that here. And moving on to Crimsons. For Crimsons, pretty much every sort of demon is a good source of Crimsons, like Water Fiends, Ripper Demons, and Calgarians. And of course, you got the Exiled Calphite Guardians. Blue Charms are the same as Crimsons, you just get less of them. Now for the most annoying part about summoning, Tertiaries. I'm only going to be going over the most farmable Tertiaries and how to get them. There are plenty of pouches you can make if you have the supplies, so don't blame me if you find, like, 20,000 fire talismans in your bank and I didn't go over them. These are just the farmable tertiaries. We're gonna start with gold charms. Thankfully, there's only three. First, you make dreadfell pouches. You make those from raw chickens, which you can buy from the meat shops. There's three of them on the right here. Then, when you get to 16, you start making granite crabs. You get those from iron ore, which you mine. Then, from 52+, plus, you make spirit terror birds. The XP... 
from these patches is really not that great, so you're not going to be making them forever unless you're really desperate. They are a pretty decent Beast of Burden for the level, so make these and save a couple of them until you get the better Beast of Burdens like War Tortoise or Packy X. Now we're on to Green Charms. I really wouldn't make any pouches from Green Charms until level 28 where you get Compost Mounts. You can make these from Compost, which you can buy from farming shops. One farming shop in Catherby sells 300, which is more than you'll need to get to level 33, for beavers. Beavers you make from willow logs, and these are actually pretty good for woodcutting. It's a plus two invisible boost. I'm not going to go into what that does. But keep these until you have the Ring of Whispers from Sliske's Endgame, if you are a quester. Keep making beavers until 47, when you get magpies. Magpies you make from gold rings, which you craft. These are good for thieving, and I still use these at Crux of Qual Nights, even past 99. Keep making magpies until 56, where you get Abyss. Ibis? Abyss? Whatever these patches are. You make these from harpoons, which you can buy from fishing shops. And same thing with the beavers. These are another passive buff for fishing. Keep a couple of these until you get some of the higher level familiars, like granite lobsters. And keep making Abyss until 68, where you can start making Bunyips. Bunyips are easy to make. You can make these from raw sharks, which if you do any sort of PVM, you'll have plenty of. They're also a low-level familiar that gives you some passive healing, so if you don't have the level for better familiars, keep a couple of these because they will be helpful. Much more helpful than no familiar. And at level 69, you unlock the best familiar for green charms, Fruit Beds. Fruit beds you can make from bananas, which you can pick from the banana plantation on Karunja, or from casting the spec, you get bananas and the best source of papayas in the game, and you can also get more coconuts. Make plenty of fruit beds, and make the scrolls too. If you have amulet hour, make them on amulet. Fruit beds are amazing. Make lots of these. Now we're on to crimsons. Same thing with greens, I really wouldn't make these at a low level. I wouldn't start using crimsons until 46, where you unlock pyre lords. Pyre lords you make from tinderboxes, which you can buy from the fire making shop in Sears Village. Make those until 49, where you unlock bloated leeches. You can make those from raw beef, which you can buy from meat shops. Make those until 64, when you can make stranger plants, which you can buy from the Falador Park shop. These are kind of expensive, they're at 1000 GP to buy the plant. But they're a lot faster than the bloated leech, so still worth. If you're poor, just stick with the bloated leeches until level 74. And once you get there, start making granite lobsters. These are just better than abyss in every way. They're more XP and they're a bigger fishing buff, so if you haven't gotten rid of them yet, then now you can get rid of your abyss. And keep these granite lobsters, these are a really good fishing buff. Use them forever, every time you fish. Keep making granite lobsters until you get 96, where you can start making pack yaks. Pack yaks are the most efficient and best crimson pouch you can make. Obviously, if you have steel ingots and you're 99, make some steel titans, but you're not going to have a good source of those. Pack yaks you can make from the yak hides, which you can get 1,010 per day if you buy them from Yatiso. Also, you get more if you harvest your player and farm yaks, if you're growing yaks. Finally, we're on to blue charms. Same thing with all the other ones. Skip the low levels with these. The longer you wait, the more XP you can make per charm. If you're desperate, you can make the iron minotaurs, but I really wouldn't start making any blue charm patches until 56, where you get steel minotaurs. Thankfully, this is very easy to follow. Every 10 levels, you get the next tier. So, 56 steel minotaurs, 66 mithril, 76 adamant, 86 rune minotaurs. Very simple. I would not make rune minotaur pouches if you still need smithing xp a rune bar is worth more to smithing than it is to summoning but it's your call you know when you're done with summoning if you really want to just keep mining and making more rune bars and use them all for summoning go for it and 89 you get geyser titans you can make these from water talismans which you get from pvm arch glacier is the best by the way now, more than likely, you're going to run out of tertiaries before you run out of charms, except for crimsons. So what happens when that happens? You can basically use the last couple of slides as a reverse tier list of sorts. But before you do that, 
check your bank to see if you already have something to make other pouches. That's always going to be more efficient than going to gather, especially if you have to mine and then smell the bar. So for blue charms, for example, if you ran out of water talismans, check your bank for other talismans first, and then see if you have any bars that you don't need for smithing. And if you don't have anything in your bank, switch charms. Making pack X is more efficient than going to gather something and then making the pouches for blues. So just switch charms if you don't have any ingredients. And some quick efficiency tips before we go into making the pouches. Once you have Plague's End done, only make pouches during Amlon Voice of Saren. It's 20% more experience. Nothing comes close to how good that buff is. And if you have them, always use Torstil Incense 6 and the Wisdom Aura. Again, if you have them while you're making pouches. And if you're doing Slayer, make sure you prefer some high GP or high charm dropping tasks. For example, Nightmare Creatures and Ripper Demons. There are more, but this is not a Slayer video. I did mention it earlier in the video, but almost every single boss drops some sort of GP or some sort of charm. So if you can do some bossing or hey, if somebody invites you to PVM, it's probably going to indirectly or directly help you with summoning, especially if it's Arch Glacier streaking. And always remember to buy your yak heads. I know it's a daily, but if you do it every day for a year, you already have 200 mil summoning banked. So the more times you do that, the less you have to worry about summoning. Then you just have to get the charms. So first we've got the Taverly run method. Uh, just what I'm gonna call it. Very simple. You are at the Taverly Lodestone to teleport, or you teleport to the Taverly Lodestone, run south here to the bank, load your preset, run over to the obelisk, and repeat. For every sort of preset, you're always going to need pouches, spirit shards, charms, and tertiaries. Obviously, at a low level, you would not be making pack X, but this is just a summoning preset to show. Full shaman outfit if you have it, spirit emerald, or any sort of uh, spirit gem. Save charms, skill cape also saves charms, and um, mobile, and do well for play to dive. Obviously, you can just use regular dive if you have it, but pretty standard preset. Once you have Spirit Terror Birds or higher, you can bring in Beast of Burden and fill that, which will make you, which will allow you to make more pouches per preset. So you just run over here. Obviously, use your movement abilities once you have those. You make the pouch. Coming back, you teleport back to the Lodestone. Quick teleports speed this up quite a bit. You run south to the bank here, and you load it again. Very simple, you can do this on a very, very new account, provided you have, you know, all the things you need. The second method requires a little bit of hunter. You can hunt these saber-toothed kayats here. This is north of the Fremnic Lodestone, just in case you're unfamiliar. Oops. You tease it, set a trap, you jump over it, you catch these. And you use this kayat fur to make spirit kayats. You need 57 summoning. You need 57 summoning and 55 hunter in order to do this. But you can turn this kayat fur into spirit kayats. I'm gonna get to do that now and I'll show you why we wanna do that. So we've made our spirit kayat familiar. We're gonna summon it. And if you have access to a quick bank like Wars Retreat, this method is pretty good. The last method was about 3,000 per hour, uh, 3,000 pouches per hour with pretty much paying attention and not running out of run energy. This is more than 4,000. So you load your preset, you interact with the familiar, and you click teleport. Then you open this trap door here. And look, a summoning obelisk, so we can make our pouches. Then we go back to a bank, and we repeat it. Without a any beast of burden, this is about twice as fast as the Taverly running method. And you won't run out of energy. This first clip is slowed down about 50%, just so I don't lose anyone right away. 
first load the preset, and then head towards this uh, glass blowing machine. As soon as you get to the stairs, you blade a dive, and then you surge. Make sure you're facing north. Then you surge twice, infuse the pouch, and immediately swap. As soon as you're done swapping, hit escape, and then withdraw Beast of Burden, and make more pouches. And then teleport back to Ithil. And that was a lot, so I'm just gonna repeat again in normal speed, alright? Withdraw your preset, blade a dive towards the glass machine, make sure you're at the stairs or you won't go far enough, position yourself north, search twice, infuse pouch, swap, escape, withdraw beast of burden, infuse pouch again, teleport to Ithil. And I'm just gonna play the clip. It takes a little while to get used to. This method is also really sweaty and very click intensive, so make sure you're taking breaks. Just one hour of AMLOD and then go take a break, do something else. Trust me, your hands will thank you. And the fourth method is personally something I've never done because I'm not a rich ironman. You can just stay at the obelisk and selling your tertiaries and buying them back. Again, only do this if you're super, super rich. You have to withdraw all of your noted tertiaries. For me, as yak hides to make pack yaks. Do not sell all. Do not do that. Reason being is 1% of his shop depletes every single minute. So you'll be losing lots, lots of ingredients. So, you sell them, you get a little bit of money. And then you pay more than three times as much. You make the pouch. You can either sell the pouch, or you can make some scrolls. Making scrolls is slightly more XP. And then you buy more. And you repeat. Again, either sell the pouch, or making scrolls. For me, I would just make more scrolls. I wouldn't... Personally, I've, I've never done this because, well, I've never been rich. I just wait for Amulet. But this is what you can do. This is more than 12,000 pouches per hour, or so I've heard. I'm not going to test the absolute maximum because I don't want to. But this is faster than Amlod, faster XP, faster patches, and a fast way to deplete all of the money you have in your bank. That's the fourth option. It's absolutely the fastest in the game. Or just wait for Amlod voices errands. And there we have it. Summoning on an Iron Man. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, please leave it a like, and subscribe for more Iron Man focused guides in the future. Last, this video is up to date as of February of 2023. If there are any minor changes, I'll post them in the description and in the pinned comment below. If there are any major changes, well, I'll make it again. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.